Now time for a question period. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Premier. Speaker, you mentioned this morning that uh, the Chief Electoral Officer has tabled a report to this Legislature. Quite frankly, it's a bombshell. I wrote the Chief Electoral Officer in December 15th regarding perceived contraventions of Section 96.1 of the Elections Act. In the report from the Chief Electoral Officer, and I quote, no Chief Electoral Officer of Ontario has ever concluded a regulatory investigation into allegations, uh, allegations of bribery or ever reported an apparent contravention at the home statutes of my office of the Attorney General. Further, in the report, it says, having reviewed the evidence and findings of this regulatory investigation, I'm of the opinion that the actions of Jerry Lawhey Jr. and Pat Patricia Sorbera amount to an apparent contravention of Section 96.1E of the Elections Act. And as reflected in my attached report, wow. consequently, Question. I've, I've reported the matter to the Attorney General. Premier, when are you going to do the right thing? Announce today the resignation of Pat Sorbera and Jerry Law. Here, here. Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And as the member opposite is well aware, this is uh, information that has just been received. And from the outset, we've been clear with Elections Ontario that they have our full cooperation. Um, we're glad that Elections Ontario took this issue seriously and that the and they've determined that the opposition's allegations against me and the member from Sudbury were baseless, Mr. Speaker. Patricia Sorbera will continue to offer her full cooperation as Elections Ontario's examination moves to the next phase in the process. I understand that the complaint has been uh, referred to the Ministry of the Attorney General and for further examination by the proper authorities, Mr. Speaker. Um, elections, as, as the member opposite knows, Elections Ontario's, uh, Election Ontario's examination is entirely independent of the government and neither the Attorney General Answer. nor her political staff have any involvement in that process, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, back to the Premier. Premier, this report was tabled in the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. All 107 members have a duty to uphold openness and transparency in government. Like you yourself does. said in your throne speech that you were going to have an open and transparent government Whatever and you were going to do that. politics differently. Yeah. Be Premier, accountable. the report speaks for itself. There's alleged contraventions of the Act. The member uh, of, the, of this side of the House and the members in the opposition have all written to the OPP, to the Chief Electoral Officer, when are you going to stand up at your place and do the right thing and cut these two bad apples loose? Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As I said, we have just received, we have all just received this information. We have that we will continue to work and in full cooperation with Elections Ontario. The fact is, Mr. Speaker, that this is the next phase in Election Ontario's process, and we will let the process unfold, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Member from Dufferin Caledon will come to order. We're members of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We can decide that we're going to carry and do politics differently in this, in this province. And the opposition, we were there. We wrote the chief electoral officer. We listened to the tapes. We could hear it. Ontarians could hear it. Now we're asking you a very simple question. Now that the report is here and we all have a copy of it. Do the right thing. Call for their resignations. And let's move forward. Mr. Speaker, again, as I have said, we have all just received this, in, this uh, information. I understand. I understand the political imperative of the party opposite, Mr. Speaker. We will continue to work with Elections Ontario. Sabera will continue to work with Elections Ontario, Mr. Speaker. I am glad that they have taken this seriously and that they have tabled this report, Mr. Speaker. And as I have said, any suggestion, any suggestion, this doesn't change the fact that any suggestion that anything was offered in exchange for any action is false, Mr. Speaker. That has not changed, and that will not change. The fact is that we were working to keep this young man involved in the process. That's what Patricia Cervera was doing. We just received this information, Mr. Speaker, and we'll take it under consideration. Thank you. Question. The member from Leeds Grenville. Speaker, my question is back to the Premier. I'm going to read you again a paragraph from the Chief Electoral Officer's report. 
Having reviewed the evidence and findings of this regulatory investigation, I am of the opinion that the actions of Jerry Lahey Jr. and Patricia Sorbera amount to an apparent contraventions of subsection 96.1e of the Election Act, as reflected in my attached report. Consequently, I have reported the matter to the Attorney General of Ontario in accordance with section 402 of the Election Act. Premier, if you stand with these two, you're going to fall with these two. Exactly. Stand up and call for their resignations. Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I appreciate the uh, sentiment from the member opposite. As I have said, we just received this information. We received the information from Elections Ontario. Um, the, you know, the member has quoted from, um, from one letter. I will quote from the letter uh, regarding my involvement, having reviewed the evidence and findings, reviewed the evidence and findings from this regulatory investigation. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to ask the members from Dufferin, Caledon, and Huron Bruce to come to order, please. Second time for both. Carry on. I am of the opinion that the actions of Premier Wynne do not amount to an apparent contravention of subsection 96.1e of the Election Act. And similarly, in the letter regarding Glenn Tebow, having reviewed the, reviewed the evidence and findings from this regulatory Order. investigation, I am of the opinion that the actions of Mr. Tebow Answer. do not amount to an apparent contravention of subsection 96.1e of the Election Act. So, Mr. Speaker, we receive all of this information. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, again, my uh, question goes back to the Premier. In recent months, your government has distanced itself from alleged criminals like Ben Levin for child porn, Chris Mazza for corruption and expense scandals, and Livingston, Miller and Feist for destruction of gas plant documents. Premier, you are degrading your office. Absolutely. Cut this bad apple loose and apologize to the people of Ontario. information today and we will continue to cooperate with Elections Ontario as well Patricia Sabera. But nothing in this information today changes the fact, Mr. Speaker, that there was no offer for any action, Mr. Speaker. Any allegation that that was the case is The minister is not helping. And the member's not helping either. Thank you. Finish, please. I have deep respect for Elections Ontario and for the work that the Chief Electoral Officer does, Mr. Speaker. And I understand that they are moving now into the next phase. But the fact is that what I did and what we have done Answer. on this side, Mr. Speaker, was work to keep a young person involved in the party. That is what we did, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Stop the clock, please. Stop the clock. Regretfully, I've heard some uh, unparliamentary language. I can't identify the individual, and I wish they would never say that again. Final supplementary. Premier, you can spin it any way you want. You can talk about getting a young person involved. You can issue press releases saying the tapes exonerate your staff, but clearly the proof is in these documents. There are contraventions. You can do the right thing, Premier. You can, you can be what you said you would be at our inaugural meeting of this legislature. You can do politics differently. You can be open and transparent. Premier, apologize to the people of Ontario. Let's get these people's resignations and let's move forward. Mr. Speaker, I received this information this morning. I've said that repeatedly. Patricia Sabera will continue to work with Elections Ontario, Mr. Speaker. And the fact is that Elections Ontario has moved into the next phase. The Attorney General's office, Mr. Speaker, is, uh, and the, uh, the other authorities will, uh, will now take that investigation to the next stage, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I, will, I will take all of this information under advisement, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question. The third party. Speaker, uh, my question is uh, for the Premier. <clears throat> Today, the Chief Electoral Officer said, I quote, It is my opinion that the actions of Jerry Lahey Jr. and Pat Cerbera, Patricia Cerbera constitute an apparent 
contravention of subsection 96.1e of the Elections Act. Speaker, I want to ask the Premier when she's going to actually fire Pat Cerbera and remove Mr. Lawheed, Lawheed from his position as the chair of the Police Services Board in Sudbury. Well, Mr. Speaker, as I have answered this question six times already, I will answer it once again. We just received this information, Mr. Speaker. I'm, uh, you know, I've said from the outset that we uh, we will work with and that Patricia Sabera will work in full cooperation with Elections Ontario. We have done that. We will continue to work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. And uh, as I just received this information this morning, Mr. Speaker, we are taking it under advisement. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, Elections Ontario is non-partisan. They've investigated the actions of the Premier's office and her operatives, and they say that Gary, Jerry Lougheed and Pat Sorbera broke the law. When will the Premier admit that this has happened and ask for their jobs? When will she make sure that she does the right thing and removes these people from their responsibilities because they no longer have the public trust? Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, let's just, let's just be clear that that is not what the letters have said, and that's the point that I was making earlier, that in fact, in terms of the fact, nothing has changed, Mr. Speaker. The Elections Ontario is talking about allegations. They're talking about apparent allegations, Mr. Speaker, about the appearances. So the fact is that there was no, there was no commitment to uh, offer anything in exchange for an action, Mr. Speaker. That has not changed from yesterday to today. I made a decision about appointing a candidate. We worked to keep the, uh, the past candidate involved, Mr. Speaker. That's the fact. Elections Ontario has taken this seriously, and I'm pleased that they've taken it seriously. And the process will unfold, Mr. Speaker. But nothing in terms of the facts has changed from yesterday Answer. to today. Speaker, the report is one thing, but what actually happened is something else altogether. And it's time this premier comes clean on exactly what happened around the stink in Sudbury. <laughs> Speaker, when this premier, this premier learned that David Livingston was the subject of a police investigation, she rushed in to say, "Quote: This is not the way government should operate. This is not the way the premier's office should conduct itself. This is not the." Way my office operates. Unquote. Now, Elections Ontario has uh, an unprecedented finding in their investigation, and they say that the Election Act was in fact broken. When will this Premier fire Pat Sorbera and make sure that Mr. Lougheed is removed from his position Question. of public trust on the Police Services Board in Sudbury? So once again, let's just be clear, Mr. Speaker, that is not what Elections Ontario has said. Elections Ontario is talking about apparent actions, Mr. Speaker, apparent contraventions. The facts have not changed from yesterday to today, Mr. Speaker. Elections Ontario Order. is going to the next phase, Mr. Speaker. They have uh, referred the complaint to the Minister of the Attorney General for further examination by the proper authorities. Order. This is in process. Mr. Speaker, I received this information this morning, as everyone in the House did. That, that I have said. And I the uh, member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke will come to order. Uh, new question. The leader of the third party. Speaker, my next question is to the Premier. We now have Mr. Lougheed, Ms. Sorbera, Elections Ontario, and the OPP with one version of what happened in Sudbury. The Chief Electoral Officer said, uh, and the Premier with another version of what happened. So we have two different versions. We talked about that yesterday. It's clear the Premier is still sticking to that today. The Chief Electoral Officer said this, having reviewed the evidence, reviewed the evidence and findings from the regu this regulatory investigation, it is my opinion that the actions of Jerry Lougheed and Patricia Sorbera constitute an apparent contravention of subsection 961E of the Elections Act. Now, Order. this Premier has her version of the truth, and everybody else has a different one. Question. Premier, it must be getting pretty lonely, is what I would say. Whose version of the truth can the people of Ontario believe? Thank you. 
Mr. Speaker, I think it's very, it's very important to read closely what has been said in the opinion and an apparent contravention, Mr. Speaker, there isn't a conclusion in, those la in that language. What, the, what Elections Ontario has done is they have passed this process on to the next phase through the Attorney General's office, Mr. Speaker, for further examination by the proper authorities. That is what the next stage is, Mr. Speaker. We all just received this information this morning, and I will take it under advisement. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, the Premier says that nothing in fact has changed, but that is not true. Today, Elections Ontario confirmed that there was a wrongdoing in Sudbury. This is a nonpartisan organization, Speaker. This nonpartisan organization did their jobs, and they came to the conclusion Minister that of Economic Pat Development Rivera come to order. and Jerry Lougheed offered bribes to Andrew Olivier. Now, the question remains, will this Premier do the right thing if she's not prepared to actually fire Pat Sorbera and Mr. Lougheed? Will she confirm that she will be appointing an independent investigator and prosecutor for this process to go forward? <laughs> Deputy Premier. Deputy Premier. Well, Speaker, um, I think it's time to actually take a look at what happened. Um, in this by-election, the best candidate Actually, don't stop the clock. Order, please. Carry on. Yes, Speaker, the people of Sudbury have spoken. In this election, the best candidate and the only party with a positive message was elected. I understand that hurts the party opposite. And, Speaker, we've been very clear, the Premier has said over and over again, we did have a conversation with a past candidate about how to stay involved, how to continue to make a positive contribution. I think anyone here um, would, uh, nobody here would suggest that those are conversations that happen within parties. Speaker, the member from uh, Lakes brought, resigned her seat, accepted a paid position on the same day. She said, and I quote from the Toronto Star, Scott, who will now be the party paid election reading this chair. Thank you. Final supplementary. Speaker, this is a shameful demonstration of a government that simply will not take responsibility for its actions. Yeah. People of this province deserve so much better than this, Speaker. They deserve to have trust in the Premier's office. They deserve to have trust in the government. They deserve to have people who are working for the Premier and the government uh, to be above uh, this kind of accusation. And when this kind of accusation comes forward, they deserve to have a Premier that steps up to the challenge and behaves in a way that's dignified and appropriate for a Premier to behave. So I will ask the question one more time. Will this Premier fire Pat Sorbera? Will she make sure Mr. Lougheed is no longer the chair of the Police Services Board in Sudbury? And will she Thank appoint you. an independent prosecutor from outside of Ontario? Thank you. <laughs> so, Speaker, um, I'll continue with this quote from the Toronto Star, January 10, 2009. Uh, Scott conceded it's a quote a very difficult issue, a very difficult issue to get MPPs who have no pension plan to resign. So, order. <laughs> Carry on, please. So, Speaker, it is not credible. The member from Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry will come to order. So, Speaker, it is simply not credible for the opposition parties to the member from Prince Edward Hastings come to order. Conversations that don't happen in the political process. I suspect there were difficult conversations with Jonah Shine, with with Paul Ferreira, with Laurie Scott, with Member Speaker, in politics, this happens. We have we have talked about. Thank you. Senator, please. 
The uh, member from Renfrew will come to order, the member from uh, Bruce Gray Owen Sound will come to order, and the member from Prince Edward Hastings will come to order. Second time for two of you. New question? The member from uh, Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox, and Attic. Uh, Attic and Lennox. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Premier, you apparently don't mind living and conducting your office in the shadows of shame, disgust, and malfeasance. But Premier, Premier, your actions, your actions cast a shadow. Uh, excuse me. That that uh, I will ask you to withdraw. I'll withdraw. Uh, but your actions cast a long shadow over this whole institution and every member in it. It also casts a long, dark shadow over the province, your actions. Any premier, any honourable premier would take this seriously. You, you mentioned that the chief electoral officer took this matter seriously, but clearly you are not. You are prepared to bring harm and injury to this institution. Will you do the honourable thing, relieve Sobera and Lowheed from their jobs until this Thank matter you. is cleared up with in the courts? So, let me once again say that we all just got this information, Mr. Speaker, and uh, what I will not do is take rash advice from the other side of the floor until I've had an opportunity to consider all of the, uh, the information. And let me just, let me just read from uh, the report. This is page eight in the report. And what, uh, what it says is yes. that um, to form an opinion that, conducts, that, that conduct amounts to an apparent contravention as set out in section 4.0.2 of the Election Act, I must be satisfied based on the evidence obtained in my investigation that this is a prima facie case of a contravention. This means that I must be aware of sufficient facts that, if proven correct, would yes. constitute a contravention of the Election Act or the Election Finances yes. Act. And he goes on to say, yes. I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter Answer. nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. That is what he said in the report, Mr. Speaker. Again to the Premier. Premier, the Chief Electoral Officer cannot prosecute. However, he has the Chief Electoral Officer is an independent, non-partisan officer of this House. He has a duty and obviously He's taken it seriously. Everybody, everybody Deputy knows House what the right thing to do here is. The, the chief electoral officer has spelled it out clearly that these allegations are a prim, prima facie case of wrongdoing. He's recommended further action. How come you won't take any action at all, Premier? No action at all. Have those two bad apples be removed and do the honourable thing sir. and take away this dark shadow that you're casting over all of this institution. Thank you. So let me, let me just go over what I quoted and let me just add to it, uh, go a little bit farther. So uh, again, what the electoral officer says, this means I must be aware of sufficient facts that if proven correct, would constitute a contravention of the Election Act or the Election Finances Act. When I form an opinion that there has been an apparent contravention, in quotes, I do not weigh questions of credibility or balance competing facts as between the parties. I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. That is what the Chief Electoral Officer has said, Mr. Speaker. He has passed on this information to the next phase of his process. Well, my question is directly to the Premier. Premier, you're talking about taking this to the next phase. You say that, that, that you'll take Elections Ontario uh, uh, report under advisement. The fact is that political interference is at the heart of this scandal. Will the Premier commit today? to take herself out of this process? Will she take her Liberal Attorney General out of this process? And will you appoint an independent prosecutor to prosecute these charges? You know, Mr. Speaker, I respect and trust the processes that we have in place in Ontario. I respect the language Ontario and our judicial system are of the highest quality in the world. I'm sorry that the NDP doesn't have that faith in our institutions in Ontario, but we do on this side. Speaker, we're going to let this process play out. And I will once again read into the record.
record what the Chief Electoral Officer has said. He said, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, of whom we have excellent members in this province, Mr. Speaker. Order. Start the clock. Supplementary. Well, to the Premier. Premier, it's in fact your disrespect of the process that's put you in this mess in the first place. The law is clear. So I'll say to you again. The chief electoral officer has said his report is now in the hands of the minister of the attorney general, your liberal cabinet minister. I'm looking at the minister of the attorney general who's sitting in the liberal front bench, and I'm asking, will the premier take out of the hands of the liberal attorney general and into the hands of an independent prosecutor from outside Ontario the responsibility to actually prosecute these charges? Premier. Attorney general. Attorney general. I think it's Mr. Speaker. No, no, no. no. The Chief Electoral Officer is an independent officer of the Legislative Assembly. The Chief Electoral Officer has a process in place to investigate complaints. As has been mentioned previously on numerous occasions, this process exclusively involves non-partisan officials within the Ministry of the Attorney General. No political staff, including myself or members of my political office, have anything to do with this process. The system is already designed so that only non-partisan officials handle any complaint, and the third exactly. party has been made aware of this process. Exactly. So, and it is my understanding that the matter is being Answer. dealt with by another prosecution services. Thank you. Service. Thank you, Mr. Your question is the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. This week is Ontario Heritage Week, and yesterday we had the members of the Architectural Conservancy of Ontario here with us in the Legislature. As a All members have the right to ask questions in silence. As a past president of ACO Cambridge, I'm proud to have worked with the ACO. The Architectural Conservancy of Ontario was incorporated in 1933. They had a vision to preserve the best of Ontario's architecture and natural areas that continues today. Preserving our heritage boosts tourism and provides economic benefits such as revenue from the film industry. Murdoch's Mysteries chose my riding of Cambridge as a filming location. Heritage tourists stay longer, spend more, and this is a growing area of tourism. One year, the annual Heritage House Tour in my riding of Cambridge brought in Question. 600 visitors from around the province. Speaker, could the minister please tell the members of this house about Ontario Heritage Week? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I want to uh, first start by uh, wishing all Ontarians who are celebrating uh, Chinese New Year a uh, Happy New Year. And uh, I also want to thank the member from Cambridge for her, uh, her advocacy around heritage here in the province of Ontario. Heritage Week is an, an amazing opportunity to put a spotlight on promoting and protecting our province's heritage, and I'm glad the member from Cambridge has embraced these values. Uh, heritage Week uh, in Ontario started on Monday and will go until uh, Sunday, February 22nd, and throughout communities across this great province, uh, there will be many different events, so I encourage all members to get out there and support their communities as they uh, celebrate the heritage here in the, in the province of Ontario. And I know the MPP from Kingston, the island, attended a great event uh, this week uh, to kick off Ontario Heritage Week. Uh, the event took place at the Ryerson Athletic Centre, which uh, yes, we know is a historical site where the Toronto Maple Leafs won eight Stanley Cups, and, uh, and I hope all members have the opportunity to, uh, to celebrate Thank this you. amazing week. Thank you, Minister. I know that each year there's a theme chosen to be able to celebrate on Ontario's Heritage Week. 
When I was president of ACO one year, we asked the Municipal Heritage Advisory Committee and City Council to designate the Shade Street Arena in Cambridge under Part 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act. Not only was it the oldest operating arena in North America, it was beautifully built in 1922 with yellow brick, with a roof full of skylights to allow in the natural light. But one of the reasons it was designated was its culturally significant history. Hockey player Bobby Hull played in this arena, and Toller Cranston, the famed figure skater, made his name while he skated in the Shade Street Arena. The citizens in my riding of Cambridge are very proud of our sports heritage. Sure. Speaker, could the minister please tell the members of this House about the theme for this year's Ontario Heritage Week? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, I'd like to thank the member from Cambridge for her question. The theme for this, week's, uh, this year's Heritage Week is Play, Endure, Inspire, Ontario's Sport Heritage, and it's a celebration of our athletic past here in the province of Ontario. And it's a reminder of our sport legacy that's enriched our province, and it's provided inspiration to countless Ontario athletes. And it's given us, Mr. Speaker, a very strong foundation to which to grow and develop sport and athleticism here in the province of Ontario. This year's theme is especially fitting because, as we know, in four and a half months, we will have the Pan Am Pair Pan Am Games that will take place in the GTA and throughout uh, the province of Ontario. And our athletes will be in the spotlight this summer, and I know that they'll build Ontario's strong sport heritage and also make some history of their own. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, the report from Elections Ontario is not ambivalent. It is clear there is an apparent breach of the rules. They have broken the law, according to the Chief Electoral Officer. They have broken the law. Premier, you have claimed to be a leader. I ask you to show some of that leadership. You talked about always acting in the best interest of Ontarians with a commitment to, a, to transparency, to openness and accountability. Show that you are accountable and cut Pat Sabera and Jerry Lougheed loose, at least until time, as this investigation is complete. And the Attorney down. General has completed their investigation and the OPP have completed theirs. Show some leadership and have these people step aside so that the people across Question. this province there. can believe that there is some integrity left in this government. Well, there is. Thank you. So, Mr. Speaker, let me just once again read what the Chief Electoral Officer has said. To form an opinion that, con that conduct amounts to an apparent contravention as set out in Section 4.0.2 of the Election Act, I must be satisfied, based on the evidence obtained in my investigation, that there's a prima facie case of a contravention. That mean this means I must be aware of sufficient facts that, if proven correct, would constitute a contravention of the Election Act or the Election Finances Act. He goes on to say, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. That is what the Chief Electoral Officer has said, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Premier, leadership is not by demonstrating how long you can stonewall. Leadership is about doing the right thing, even if it hurts, even if it hurts, even if it's an admission that something was right on order. your part. Now, I guess we could ask, are you protecting Pat Sabera and Jerry Lougheed because they were working under your direct orders? Yep, Did yeah. they make those offers under your direct orders? Yeah, or will you do the right thing, respect the report from the chief electoral officer, Send these people into the penalty box. At the very least, if you're not going to fire them outright, put them in the penalty box until this matter can be cleared up. So on behalf of the people of Ontario, I ask you, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Thank you. Well, Deputy Speaker, uh, Speaker, let me try this one more time. Here is, I'm quoting from the Chief Electoral Officers. He said, I am neither, yeah, listen, I am neither, okay, don't listen, I am neither deciding to cross it. Um.
start the clock. Finish, please. The Chief Electoral Officer writes, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. That is clearly what the Chief Electoral Officer has said. Speaker, the people of Sudbury have made a decision. The opposition Answer. is not happy with that decision, but I think at least they need to respect that decision. The new member for Sudbury has been a very strong advocate and championing the causes that matter to the people of Sudbury. Thank you. New question. The leader of the third party. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Pat Cerbera is the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff. Right now, she is on the public payroll. And She's making decisions that affect Ontarians from one end of this province to the other. Today, the Chief Electoral Officer said that, uh, quote, I am of the opinion that the actions of Jerry Lawhey Jr. and Pat Cerbera amount to apparent contraventions of subsection 96.1e of the Elections Act. Apparent, obvious, certain, very, very visually clear. That's what apparent means, Speaker. Stop the clock. My attempt to have everyone uh, put questions and answers in silence applies to everybody. Please, Mr. Leader. Will the Premier do the right thing and ask or have Pat Cerbera step aside from her position? So, I think. It's, it's, it's hard to believe that I have to do this one more time, but I'm going to do this one more time, Speaker. The Chief Electoral Officer wrote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. I think the members of the opposition need to actually read what the, uh, the Chief Electoral Officer said and respect the process. The Premier has said repeatedly that we, we will fully cooperate with any investigations underway in this matter, as we have always done, Speaker. I do, I do think it's important to remind uh, the, the, the members opposite, and I know this isn't easy, but they had an MPP. Answer. The NPP uh, stepped aside after five months, and they lost a seat. The people of Sudbury were sick and tired of the Thank negativity. You. They appreciated the positive campaign. Thank you. New question. New question. The leader of the third party. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, it, it's actually Sorry, my supplementary. It's my supplementary. Thank you, um, Speaker. Back to the Premier. You know, uh, what's really hard to believe is that um, the Chief Electoral Officer actually says that they have never conducted a regulatory investigation into allegations of bribery or ever reported an apparent contravention of the uh, home statutes of his office uh, to the Attorney General. That's what's actually really hard to believe, is that that's actually happening for the first time in Ontario under the uh, watch of this government because of the actions that they've taken. Now, I talked about Pat Cerbera. Now I want to ask about Jerry Lockheed, who is actually in a position of trust speaker as the chief, as the head of a police services board that's supposed to be upholding the laws of Ontario. And this report says that he actually has broken the laws of Ontario. So my question to the premier is: When is she going to call question. for Jerry Lockheed to step aside from the position of a head of the police services board in Sudbury? Thank you, Deputy Premier. Attorney General. Attorney General. Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, I think that the uh, Chief Electoral Officer in his uh, report, in his letter at page 4, uh, uh, specified very clearly that, uh, you know, we have, they have developed a protocol, a new protocol that was not in existence when they were in power, oh, but okay. it's a new What's protocol, that in this protocol, any potential for placing the Attorney General in a personal conflict of interest is eliminated. Because the report of an apparent contravention is made by my office directly to the Deputy Attorney General of Ontario. And like I said earlier, I was, I was informed, you know, that, uh, that the matter is being dealt with with an independent Answer. prosecution service, not by the Ministry of Thank Attorney you. General. Thank you very much.
I apologize to the leader of the third party for missing her supplementary. Uh, new question, the member from Scarborough, Rose Ridgeburg. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure regarding the Rouge Park in my riding and parts of Markham. Provincial governments of all stripe have upheld strong environmental standards for the benefit of the Rouge ever since Premier David Peterson announced that these lands would be protected. Unfortunately, the weak legislation put forward by the federal government to establish a national Rouge Park fails to protect the environmental integrity of the Rouge. As a longtime supporter of the Rouge, I've been following this controversial Bill C-40 at the federal level, the Rouge National Park Act, with interest and concern. It appears that the federal conservatives, conservatives have blown a great opportunity to create a national Rouge Park. Mr. Speaker, would the minister provide this House with an update regarding Bill C-40 and how it is failing Ontario Question. and the environment in its current form. Thank you. Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member for that question. I want to thank him for his passion for saving the Rouge. He and I have been involved for over 25 years together in efforts to protect and preserve this valuable piece of land. And unfortunately, the federal government has refused to adopt any recommendations from Ontario residents or environmental groups that would strengthen environmental integrity requirements with this bill. It's incredibly disappointing that the bill passed through the House of Commons in its original weak state. This bill, as it stands, simply fails to protect the environmental integrity of the Rouge and all the lands that surround it, Mr. Speaker, and that's not acceptable. As a result, this minister and this government will not, in good faith, transfer provincially owned lands to federal ownership. Our government and I are calling on the Senate to work with the environmental groups, those who founded the Rouge Answer. in the first place and fought for it, to refer the bill back to the House of Commons and allow the bill to be strengthened appropriately. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to thank the minister for this update. I'm proud to be part of a government that will not allow weaker laws to govern this important natural landscape in my riding. My constituents will be extremely glad to know that our government is championing the need to protect the environmental integrity of the Rouge. We have an obligation to assure that the Rouge is protected for future generations to experience and enjoy. Mr. Speaker, some of my con constituents have been hearing incorrect information from the federal conservatives regarding our government's stance towards agriculture on these important lands. Mr. Speaker, can the minister please educate the House on our government's positions towards agricultural lands within the Question. park? Question. Thank you. Minister. Again, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the member for his passion for these lands. And let's be clear, our government has always supported agriculture uses as a proposed use in the park. I've met with several farming groups, Mr. Speaker, and representatives of the agriculture community there to reassure them that our government has long accepted and supported agriculture as a continuing use in the park. Our, our environmental partners, for the most part, have also been clear that they support agriculture uses in the proposed park and welcome farmers as important partners in conservation. Together, we can make the Rouge a model for sustainable agricultural practices. And again, I repeat that we urge the Senate to work with the environmental groups when Bill C-40 is referred to a Senate committee and send the legislation back, Mr. Speaker, to the House of Commons to allow it to be Answer. strengthened so that the views of those environmentalists that founded the park and the views of our agricultural stakeholders can be taken into Thank consideration. The question, the member from Leeds, Grimble. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to again read into the record a fact that uh, was presented by the Chief Electoral Officer today in his report. To uh, which ministry, please? To the Premier. Thank you. Obviously, it's the Premier. Not obviously. Um, the quote is No Chief Electoral Officer of Ontario has ever conducted a regulatory investigation into allegations of bribery or ever reported an apparent contravention of the home statutes of my office to the Attorney General. A new law. This is a historic day for the province of Ontario. A new law. Well, the truth hurts, uh, Minister, the truth hurts. No, Speaker, Mr. Bisson and I, for the NDP, we both wrote to the Chief Electoral Officer. 
The OPP are involved. Question. The Police Civilian Commission is involved. The Office of the Conflict of Interest Commissioner is involved. When are you going to stand here? Thank you. Stop the clock, please. The uh, Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, the Minister for Trinity Spadina, the Minister of Labour, and the uh, Deputy House—no, the, yes, the Deputy House Leader, who is now warned. Uh, the rest of you will come to order. Premier. Well, Speaker, Speaker, if it weren't too late for Academy Award nominations, I would be nominating the members opposite for their feigned indignation. Speaker, the reality both opposition parties have had conversations with potential candidates, with past candidates, about how to continue to stay involved, how to continue to make a positive contribution. We need look no further than the member from Kawartha Lakes Brock, Speaker. She herself conceded that it's a very delicate issue. Thank you. Finish, please. The member has conceded that it is a very delicate issue, Speaker. It the member from Dufferin Caledon is warned. The member from Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke is warned. Carrie. Thank you, Speaker. And of course, it isn't just the PPs yes, who've had those conversations. The NDP has as well. We need think no further back than uh, 2013 and the, uh, the Scarborough Guildwood nomination, where a long-standing party member was railroaded by Adam Giambroni out of Thank the you. nomination. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Thanks. Uh, Speaker, my question going back to the Premier. Well, you know what? There's a, there's a few Academy Awards going on, performances going on there. Listen, Speaker, I'm, I'm going to ask a very simple question. This is a government under three OPP investigations. The Chief Electoral Officer has presented his report on his investigation. We've got other officers of the legislature, we've got other commissions that are investigating this government. My question is simple. Premier, will you agree with me? that we should reconstitute the Justice Committee, have these people attend the meeting, and let's discuss these investigations and get a full report to MPPs in this legislature. Well, Speaker, you know, I hate to go back, but I'm going to. This is an article by Richard Brennan in, this, in the Toronto Star. Tempers flared Saturday when NDP Provincial Council blocked an investigation into a July Scarborough Guildwood nomination won by former Toronto Councillor Adam Giambroni. You are all cowards, said 90-year-old Joy Taylor who, along with other riding executives members, has maintained that several ineligible members were allowed to vote, giving the two-person race to GM Brony a last-minute entry. Speaker, a call for an independent probe and the results was ruled out of order. I am very disappointed. The president of the uh, uh, riding association told the star. So Amarjeet Kalashabra, a young woman who immigrated from India, overcame childhood polio to run for the nomination, Thank was you. railroaded by the— Thank you. Stop the clock, please. I, uh, there are times where even I have to correct my record. Um, I apologize to the member from Trinity Spadina. It was actually Beaches East York. New question. The uh, Leader of the Official Opposition. Premier, in essence, uh, the rule of Sorry. Uh, I apologize again. I, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that's said in jest. Thank you. Um, sorry about that. New question, the leader of the third party. Speaker, uh, speaker my question is uh, for the Premier. Elections Ontario uh, says, uh, the off chief, uh, chief electoral officer says, I am of the opinion that the actions of Jerry Lawhey Jr. and Patricia Sorbera amount to apparent contraventions of sub subsection 961E of the Elections Act. 
My question to the, to the uh, Premier Speaker is, who is responsible for giving Pat Cerbera her instructions? The people of Sudbury made a decision to actually uh, send a Liberal to Queen's Park, a Liberal who represented their values. He was the only candidate who presented a positive platform, a positive campaign, and we are delighted that he is here making that positive contribution, Speaker. Here's what, why I believe that the people of Sudbury changed their minds and chose to send a Liberal to Queen's Park. The, the, the NDP has twice, twice rejected a budget that, that contained many progressive initiatives, including an increase to the Ontario Child Benefit. They said no, not Shame. once, but twice. Shameful. They said no to families caring for people yes, with developmental disabilities, not once, but twice. They said no to personal support workers Thank who you. had an increase to— Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, Elections Ontario says, uh, the Chief Electoral Officer says, I'm of the opinion that the actions of Jerry Lawhey Jr. and Patricia Cerbera amount to apparent contraventions of subsection 961E of the Elections Act. Who is responsible for giving Jerry Lawhey his instructions, Speaker? So, Speaker, again, let's look at what the NDP, who seem to have left their values somewhere else, what they rejected not once but twice. They said no to 56,000 children that need investment in the student nutrition program. They said no to workers who deserve a fair minimum wage. They said no to Aboriginal communities who benefit from the remote communities allowance and the Aboriginal Economic Development Fund. They said no to people struggling with homelessness who need enhanced funding of the Community Homelessness Prevention Initiative. They said no to people who'd rely on social assistance rates and were hoping for an increase. They said no to people living in poverty who will rely on a new local poverty reduction. Fund. They said no to workers and future retirees who will save for retirement with a Made in Ontario pension plan. They said no to families who are on child care money. Thank you. New question. The member from Barrie. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Speaker, Ontario's senior citizen population is projected to double from 2012 to 2036, and I am one of those people. I know the government has committed to better serving this community by delivering strong health services, creating the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan, and working in collaboration with various stakeholder organizations. Speaking to my constituents, I hear frequent concerns about, uh, regarding the senior community and the cons their consumer protection. Media coverage has described multiple scenarios involving seniors being taken advantage of by businesses and unscrupulous uh, organizations. Many constituents are concerned about their loved ones Question. and relatives who may not be familiar with modern industry trends and sales tactics, making them the seniors vulnerable to exploitation. Thank you. You had your time. Minister. Thank you, uh, Speaker. And I want to uh, first uh, thank the hardworking member from Barrie uh, for this important question. I'm pleased to discuss our government's efforts to protect Ontario consumers, particularly vulnerable groups like seniors who can be victimized by unfair business practices. Our government's committed to helping seniors by providing them with protection on their transactions. In particular, Bill 55, the Stronger Protection for Consumers Act, was passed to protect vulnerable Ontarians against abusive and predatory practices of some companies. The Act requires clarity in contracts and mandates cooling off periods on certain transactions, specifically door-to-door -door sales, which often target our seniors. With the constantly changing marketplace, it's also important that seniors know their rights. We have an active consumer awareness team to inform, educate and empower Ontarians. The Consumer Awareness Workshops, active 
uh, living fairs and trade shows that are coming Answer. throughout Ontario with the support of our ministry help seniors learn about industry trends and how their families can stay protected. We're going to, we're going to focus on effective legislation and far-reaching consumer protection programs. Thank you. Uh, speaker, thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, my thanks to the minister for his response and for his efforts in improving consumer protection for Ontario seniors. I've heard positive feedback from various constituents about the Ministry of, Go of Government and Consumer Services awareness campaigns and applaud any measures that encourage Ontario consumers to ask the right questions. I understand that certain sec sectors can be especially difficult for our older community to navigate. Speaker, can the Minister of Government and Consumer uh, Services speak about what he sees as the most pressing concerns for senior consumers and how he plans to address them. Thank you, Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I want to thank uh, my colleague uh, from Barrie for her uh, advocacy uh, for seniors in her riding. I'm pleased to address a couple of major concerns for seniors uh, that have been detailed in the media lately. First of all, we're working to protect seniors as they monitor their finances. In certain cases, widows and widowers must manage their finances for the first time after relying heavily uh, on a spouse uh, for years. We help seniors from being taken advantage of in these situations by requiring clarity and contrast and implementing a 10-day cooling-off period. We've also noted that many seniors are moving to condominiums, uh, that they need less space than they once did. We're working with this community by reforming the Condominium Act for the first time in 15 years so that seniors on fixed income are not left without options with respect to uh, mandatory qualifications for condo managers and affordable dispute resolution mechanism. These improvements Answer. will protect the growing number of condo-dwelling seniors. Also, as Speaker, we're uh, continuing to identify on the Ontario Beware list uh, important issues that impact our Thank seniors, you. and I look forward to continuing. Thank you. Your question, the Leader of the National Assembly, Mr. Lawler. A um, question for the Premier, uh, Mr. Speaker. Premier, the Chief Electoral Officer, in doing his uh, duty today, is essentially asking yeah, that the Attorney I'm General sure. get this right. matter before a court of law, which is her and her ministry's responsibility. It is the chief uh, electoral officer's job, as you know or ought to know, to. Um, it's not the chief electoral officer's job, I should say, to try this matter. He has no authority to do that, nor can he convict or acquit. He can only recommend, which he has done today, and point out, recommend uh, that the attorney general bring this matter forward. And uh, he's done his duty today by pointing out the wrong that has been done. It's your government job, job to get this matter to the ultimate judgment of a court, and so I ask you today, will you direct your Attorney General to expedite this matter and put it before a judge as soon as possible? Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I, I, I appreciate the analysis of the, uh, the, the Leader of the Opposition, and I know the Attorney General will want to comment in the uh, supplementary, but I just want to be clear, because there were a couple of, uh, a couple of things that uh, he said that I think are not exactly what the Chief Electoral Officer said. So just to remind everyone what he said is that um, it, to form an opinion that conduct amounts to an apparent contravention as set out in section 4.0.2 of the Election Act, I must be satisfied based on the evidence obtained in my investigation that there's a prima facie case of a contravention. This means that I must be aware of sufficient facts that, if proven correct, yeah. would constitute a contravention of the Election Act or the Election Finances Act. And he goes on to say, as, as the uh, Leader of the Opposition has said, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Yeah. Yeah. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. And so it is absolutely the case that he has passed that on to Thank the you. Attorney General, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. I didn't really hear an answer. You're, you're laying out a process, as you guys so uh, often do. But the fact of the matter is it's time for this matter to be put before a judge. Only the Attorney General can do that. I'm asking you to direct, not her directly. Member from Beaches ministry, East York, which is in your authority, come to order. Expedite this matter. Let's settle it once and for all. These people deserve their day in court. By not allowing it to go to court and settle this matter, you're not only dragging down your office. You're saying the OPP are wrong to investigate this matter. Now you're saying the chief electoral officer is wrong. You're saying the opposition is wrong. You're saying the media is wrong. You're saying the people of Ontario is wrong. Well, ma'am, you are wrong. You're delusional in this case. Do the right thing. Fire the people. Apologize. Question. And get it before court. Thank you. 
we follow her Mr. Path? Speaker, as I have uh, I had, uh, mentioned previously on numerous occasions, this process exclusively involves non-partisan officials within the Ministry of the Attorney General. No political staff, including myself or member of my political office, have anything to do with this process. I don't, you know, it's the chief prosecutor uh, officer that deal with uh, with this process, and I find it very offensive that a member of the third party know exactly that and continue to let, you know, the uh, the uh, public believe that we direct prosecution Order. from my office. It's it's very clear yes, in sir. the letter of the Chief Electoral Officer, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. New question, the Leader of the Third Party. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. Um, speaker, to, ma to maintain the public trust in—oh, sorry, it's to the Premier. To maintain the public trust in the administration of justice, Speaker, if something looks like a conflict, it is in the interest of justice to remove that perception, Speaker. That's why the Liberal government appointed an independent prosecutor when Michael Bryant was facing charges, Speaker. So will the Premier do the right thing in this case, uh, do the same thing that the Liberals did when a Liberal cabinet minister was facing an investigation and appoint an independent Independent prosecutor today. Senior. Attorney General. Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, I said it twice already in this House. You know, this matter is being dealt with with the, an independent prosecution services, and it uh, was already been sent this week sometime to the Public Prosecution Service of Canada. So I've said it. It's the third time, and I hope that you uh, will uh, respect, the respect the process. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, when Michael Bryant, a former Liberal cabinet minister, was under investigation, there was a prosecutor from outside of Ontario in charge of that investigation. That was the right thing to do, Speaker. This whole perception of justice not being done has to be removed from this process so that the public trust can be upheld. That is the bottom line. Now today, the chief electoral officer of one of the, said that one of the premier's closest advisors, her deputy chief of staff and campaign director, has, in his opinion, broken the Elections Act. Now it's time for the prosecution of that accusation. Will the premier do the right thing and appoint an independent prosecutor from outside of Ontario right now, today? First of all, Mr. Speaker, nobody has been charged. Okay, and I repeat it: it's for the fourth time that this matter is being dealt with by an independent prosecution services. It's it being dealt by the Public Prosecution Services of Canada, not Ontario. Canada. Member from Timmins, James Bay, come to order. I am. Uh, I'm going to recognize the member, but before I do, uh, the member from Timmins, James Bay, was still talking while I warned him. So I got that. The member from Kitchener uh, uh, Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, my question is for the Minister of Children and Youth Services, Minister for young people who have special needs, whether it's difficulty speaking or mobility issues that stop them from getting around. The proper care can help them lead a more fulfilling and independent life. I've heard from constituents in my riding of Kitchener Centre about their needs for community-tailored programming. We have a wonderful example of this in my riding of Kitchener Centre at the Kids' Ability Facility that opened in June of 2011. Kids and parents now have access to therapy space and a large double gymnasium. Minister, can you please inform the members of this House what are you doing to improve services for children and youth who have special needs? Thank you, Minister of Children and Youth Services. Thank you, Speaker. And I want to thank the member from Kitchener Centre for her important question and for being at the event with me last week uh, at Kids Ability Centre. Our special needs strategy, Speaker, is focused on supporting children and youth with special needs to get timely and effective services through early identification, coordinating services, and making rehabilitation services more seamless 
from birth right through the school years. And when I was parliamentary assistant speaker to this ministry, I travelled throughout the province and heard from families, heard from researchers and service providers on the strategy, and it informed the work we're doing now. So last year, we invested $5 million a year to help children's treatment centres. And I want to say at this centre, speaker, at Kids Ability, the money we have given them is to help poor rehabilitation. But what's very, very exciting, through an additional 62500 one time Answer. funding to reduce wait lists, Kids Ability was able to eliminate, completely eliminate assessment waste lists through our funding speakers. So that you. means when a family goes there. Thank you. Thank you. Point of order for the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka, for indulging me. Uh, I just wanted to ask the members to, uh, to recognize and welcome my daughter, Abigail, and my granddaughter, Beatrice, who have just arrived from. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to recognize Anela Sangradi, who's joining us here from the beautiful riding of uh, Don Valley East. Uh, member from Bruce Bray, Owen Sound. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to acknowledge a delegation from my Canada, Leah Malusis, Christian Hellman from Lions Head, Ontario, Kathleen Rogers, and Anthony Dube. They met with me, and I thank them for, for their interest in democracy. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. The, uh, the leader of the uh, point of order, uh, the point of order from the member, uh, the leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, I would hope all members of the House would uh, help uh, those of us here in the PC party uh, say goodbye to uh, Mr. Alex Bedouz, uh, who has served very ably behind the chair there as our director of legislative affairs for uh, many years. He goes on to the uh, Senate. Um, no, he's not appointed to the Senate. He's going to work for the Senate. But. Um, I'm, I'm sending him ahead of myself to clear the way for my appointment. Um, he doesn't know that, but I just told him. So thank you, Alex, for your hard work, your dedication, and we are really, really going to miss you. There are no further. There are no. Deferred votes. This House stands recess until 1 p.m. this afternoon.